Nice meeting everyone. Uh, before I start my story, it's very similar to Ray's. Um, I want to show a hands how many um, parents or individuals here have children with autism. Raise your hands. Great. And how many have started um, CBD treatment? Okay. And here, some of you have not started. Okay, great. So I, I'll kind of share my journey. Um, very similar race. So I'm going to kind of cut a couple pieces out. But um, a holistic practitioner for 17 years. And uh, I have two boys. Um, they're 9 and 10 this year. Andrew um, was diagnosed with autism at 14 months. Um, that was obviously, for everyone here, a very unusual diagnosis for parents to go through that. Like, you know, it happened and what does autism really means at this point. So as he was developing uh, about two years old, he started having night terrors. Anyone here have children with night terrors? So about three or four o'clock in the morning, he uh, wakes up incoherent, yelling and screaming, half asleep, half awake. And uh, it was really hard for us to get him back to sleep. Uh, and then about two and a half years old, he suffered his, uh, well, he had his first grand mal seizure. That was fun, right? Uh, emergency rooms and trying to figure out what it was and CAT scans, MRIs, and the whole gamut of, of that. And the only thing the doctors told me was, oh, that's normal for children with autism to have these grand mal seizures. Okay, well, what's next? It was the Keppra, it was everything else. Uh, when he started school at four, it got worse and worse and worse, nonverbal, uh, some SIB behavior, right? So backs to the wall and really uh, not understanding what was next for me, but I didn't give up hope. I started my journey in trying to you know, look to see what other um, holistic or other methodology was out there for parents like us. And I found a little video that was uh, on YouTube, uh, like any parent back in 2011, 2010, about CBD. So. I uh, never got high, and I don't drink, I don't smoke. I'm pretty straight and boring kind of guy. <laughs> OCD type A, how many OCD type A? All right, OCD type A, right? Everything has to have a reason and a rhyme. Uh, so from that point on, um, all in, CBD, THC, what is it? How do we get it? What, does it work or not? Journey with you, I probably maybe crossed paths you driving from dispensary to dispensary, dispensary starting San Jose all the way up to LA. Um, bud tenders are great if you want to get high, if you want a great edible. Um, but for parents, um, I think 75% was, what is autism? Yeah. Never heard of it, right? So I bought everything I can get my hands on in the oil farm, a syringe farm, the green sludge that was out there with a little pencil mark on there, CBD only. I went home and uh, became a little chemist. I basically made my own tincture, right? Uh, having a science background, understanding titration and, and understanding drops and volumes and ratios, um, I started with the highest potency I could finally actually get on a bottle to really guess it was a 21 to 1 ratio. Um, so Andrew loves um, rich crackers, mac and cheese, and chicken nuggets. <laughs> Sound familiar, guys? Yeah. Right. Yeah. First time I tried it on rice. Smelled it, went like this, tactile. Nah, it wasn't gonna happen, <laughs> right? Put in a little soy milk, how separation, solubility, it wasn't gonna happen. So I did a little rich cracker, I diluted with some uh, vegetable oil, I tried everything. Vegetable oil, MCT oil, everything. And I did it one drop, which is equivalent to like one milligram per drop, right? And I put it in the freezer, because I somehow remember if you, if you seafood, you put it in the freezer, it doesn't smell as bad when it comes back out. I defrost it, and I put about uh, 10, I started really slow, about 10 milligrams, right? I, before, uh, before I went to sleep. So I put about 15 Ritz crackers, 10 medicated, <laughs> 5 unmedicated, and I put it in a bowl, because I started you know, normally to snack before he goes to sleep, and I walk away. Because if you don't, what happens, guys? Right. What's dad up to? Right. Yeah. Come on, right? Like, what do you want me to eat today? <laughs> it's like having a dog. You put a pill in the, in the meat, and the dog goes, okay, meat. Spits out the pill, right? <laughs> so I walk away. I'm like, oh, God, my heart's pounding. And I turn around. It's gone. I'm like, yes. So he took it. So I'm very data-oriented. I was doing, um, in, med in med school, you're taught SOAP, Subjective Objective Assessment Planning. I went zero as normal, as can be, and 10 being just really, you know, behavioral. And I just tracked everything from his sleep patterns, his eye movements. I went totally geeked out on my son, like watching that night, <laughs> taking little notes at night. 
did he twitch? Okay, right, let's twitch. <laughs> so I didn't want to, obviously it was easy for, for us to get all of our children high with THC. I don't like using the word high, I like to use the word medicated, right? So if we're medicating our children and you know the THC is what they need, then go for it. But if not, I just want him to sleep at night and let the body heal itself, right? And that's all that we want, just the children sleep at night, heal and see what happens the next day. So I started out 21 to one and went 10 drops, finally got him to take, the, to take that routine. And I, I tried a little bit of honey sometimes too, because sometimes if the oil was too thick or too green or discoloration, I'd put honey into it and the kids love honey, so he ate it right away too. Um, so about for six weeks, no, no significant findings, nothing. Went down to 18 to one, because my brain said, all right, let's titrate him slowly, right? 18 to one, no significant change. Went to 11 to one, it was on a Wednesday. I bumped it up to 20 drops at night. And three o'clock is when my timer goes off. I'm the night shift. My wife hates waking up at night. So she's the morning, I'm the night. So I try to go early, Andrew goes on to sleep. At three o'clock I wake up, get everything ready for him. Tiles, if he has a grandma seizure and he defecates on himself. A co-pack, ready to, a ready pack to go if we need to go to ER. I mean, that was my OCD-ness. I was like, just laid everything out, ready to go. So it happens so many times, right? So 11 to 12, he's sleeping really good. Good, good respir respiration, no eye movement. Three o'clock, I'm ready for him to wake up. He's still asleep. Four o'clock, still asleep. Now I'm concerned that I gave him too much THC. <laughs> and he's like, really happy, Andrew. Uh, about three or four, but three or four like twitches and then about six o'clock he's still asleep I'm freaking out I'm like adverse reaction right this is not normal 6 15 wakes up looks at me does his normal hi dad in the morning goes to the bathroom I'm like what was that <laughs> that's not Andrew right Thursday Friday Saturday right I mean come on really so my my my, my wife and I are like happy but pissed <laughs> and that piss was, seriously, this is all it was? A chemical derived from a plant now changed my son's sleep patterns. And he's not autistic free, don't get me wrong. But I just, like, nights and nights and nights just ask God, just let him sleep. Sorry, guys. I said to myself, I wouldn't cry, but it's coming out. <laughs> so, so with that, my life switched to, you know, um, Okay, now it works. Now I know what this word means. Now what? I started, I, I turned my life around all about research, CB1, two separate sites, tried to gather as much information I have on a sponge on the internet. It was all anecdotal. Then I had a crazy idea because I kept on going to dispensaries, dude, do you test this stuff? Is it pesticide free? Like, where is that universal symbol that this stuff is safe for our kids or just any adult or anyone? Well, a lot of, you know, manufacturers are supposed to do it. We're, we just sell this stuff, so we're not going to test it. Well, that's, that's asinine. You're a medical cannabis dispensary in California, and for all the list of medical conditions, why the hell are you not doing it as a business owner, as a human being? Well, it costs too much. I'm like, wow. So I walk out. So then I go, I'm going to learn how to make my own oil. My wife goes, Okay, <laughs> what does that mean? Well, I don't know what that means either, but I'm going to find out. So once I got my boss to approve my crazy idea, sold the practice, sold my practice, sold some real estate, had some big chunk of money there, and I learned how to extract. So what BAS Research is, is my journey, how to find out how to cultivate, how to extract, make oil, and that's all we do. We do one thing well. My dad taught me a long time ago, my dad's my hero by the way, a long time ago that you do one thing, you do it well, and, that's, and everything else takes care of itself. I don't make my own products, I don't cultivate, I take great biomass from great farmers, cultivators in California, and we're licensed in Berkeley. So my journey how to get my license was I stocked every single mayor that I could in 2014 to give me the right to start this company to extract. It was, no, you got to do verticality model in California. No, we're not really knowing what CO2 does, or, or we don't want to do hydrocarbon extraction and all that stuff, because we want to see if Colorado's going to blow each other up. I mean, that's the, the little bit of knowledge that 
mayors and city staff and fire departments were just challenging me. It's like, well, just, just buy it. I said, well, wanna, you're not allowing me to have a type six non-volatile extraction license in California. Where do you think I'm buying the oil from right now? From the grade market that don't have standards, that don't have a permit, that don't test for, well, excuse me, may not have tests for pesticides. And I'm giving to my son as a supplement and a medication to his seizures and autism. That's kind of back-ass thinking, don't you think? Okay, Val, so I stalked Mayor Tom Bates of Berkeley, I spammed him, sent him articles. I literally was, for three months, spamming the mayor so much that the city attorney said, Dr. Lee, respectfully, stop spamming the mayor. <laughs> I said, Mr. City Attorney of Berkeley, respectfully, give me a two-hour freaking meeting with him. You want me to stop? Give, I'm, 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 I'm a doctor with a child that needs great oil because it works. Give me a freaking meeting. They gave me a meeting. Two-hour meeting. I pitched what I wanted to do. The, the city attorney was questioning, you know, my advocacy, or am, I a, am I a Vietnamese gang member? <laughs> trying to sell underground weed? I Come on, guy, I really? <laughs> sorry, all right, sorry, truth comes out. So, so here you go, right, here you go. What happens next is very interesting. The mayor looks at me and goes, Bao, why do you really wanna do this, this business in Berkeley? I showed him a video of Andrew having night terror, grandma seizure, and he defecated himself on one video. I passed the phone to the city manager, the city attorney, the chief of police, and the police department, the chief of uh, fire marshal, Tony Yin. At that time, I don't think there was a dry eye in the room, because I think they were human now, most of the city staff. And then the mayor goes, I want two things from you. I go, okay. One thing, I want you to do the right thing. Second, don't make me look bad and he leaves the room. So the city attorney looks at me, was that a yes or a no? <laughs> I said, I think that's a yes. So in November of 2015, uh, the city attorney's office said, Dr. Lee, you impacted the mayor, the, the city of Berkeley can support you to do this manufacturing business. Congratulations, come and felt the permit. That milestone just flipped my world upside down. Now. We have CO2 extractor machines. So you know you use essential oils, you can lift this peppermint. Is it safe? Well, my point is that if people can aerate that and aerosolize that, and you put it on your skin as essential oils, CO2 is the same machine that people take plant matter. You can lift this plant, peppermint plant, to make essential oils. So I was like, well, why, if it's safe for nutraceutical, why can't I use that for cannabis? So which I did. It's a plant, cannabis is a plant. So you extract the CBD, terpenes, and, and THC out, and you fraction it, and it's safe, and it's, it's to the point where you can test every single part of it and make sure the pesticide levels, microbial levels, which is you know, yeast and mold to make it safe. So when I hit that milestone that we're making our oil, my, my own oil for Andrew, as parents here, you need to do three things that I did. Learn about CBD and what the benefits are, Find the source that you can trust. Go to that source and ask them questions. And lastly, start slow and document everything. Because everyone knows what the triggers are here, right? As parents, I don't know how age groups are here, but there are triggers to our children with autism. And we know what those triggers are, right? So to me, when I see that happening, when I have a daily regimen, it took me six months to figure out Andrew's ratio and, and percent of CBD and THC. Six months is a long time to believe in something and not give up hope. So really, I'm here to share my story to, for everyone here not to give up hope. There's always a solution. You have to be observant and you have to, to ask people that have gone through it and really ask the right questions and don't feel that you're asking too many questions and don't feel that, that we can't hug each other and help each other because it's all about our children. So. After this thing, if you want to go to info at BS Research, like I said, I don't make my own products, but I sell and also support groups that make products, and we got to talk, because I love to donate a large portion of what we're doing to organizations that have that front-facing, because that front-facing needs that support, not only financially, but operators and business. Because once we get rid of all the fundraising and, and what you're trying to do and raise money, and you can focus on actually helping people, that's when it's more impactful. 
So thank you for having me. And, and like I said, after the talk, if you want to go one on one with me or just email us at info at bsresearch.com. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it.